We've got a new PCB. This is for the 18S module. Previously, we printed this dummy sheet out, and now we're gonna look at the real thing. Uh, this is JLC PCB, not sponsored in any way. Uh, I've said before, they do low-end PCBs very well. This is a very low-end PCB. It really only needed to be one layer, but uh, nowadays, two layer is pretty much the minimum you can do with a standard FR4. So let's pop it open. Uh, I didn't get the 12S, I thought, so this is just the 18S PCB. Didn't get the 12S one, but that's okay. All right, so, yep, packaged well as normal. I only ordered, uh, I believe, 10 of these, and I only ordered five of the other ones, so that'll be enough to do five cars. And so I'll be able to send four of the uh, prototype kits out, assuming there aren't any problems with this PCB. And if there were problems, it would be mechanical fitment, because if there were electrical problems with this, I would probably give up my double E degree. It's very simple. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a one layer PCB here. Uh, well, we're using one layer. It has uh, copper on the other side. This is just floating copper. Um, the goal was that um, maybe there'd be some thermal mass, although I didn't put vias in it. So the main thing on this side is the silk screen. And then over here is where we'll populate all the resistors. And this will attach here. First, we will populate the resistors, of course. I'm not gonna do that now in this video. Uh, that's gonna be on the pick and place machine. And then this will populate, uh, yeah, but this hole lines up with that. And you basically take the screws out, slide this over. I have no idea if this actually fits. It should. Um, and then this should pop on like so. And that looks, looks good to me. Yeah, so this is a one millimeter thick PCB and that looks like it's gonna be just fine. And so yeah, again, these 18S are, are really dumb. They don't have any logic at all. They just have these heat sinks. Uh, I don't need the 12S one. I can start doing my prototype now and I will just run it with an external power supply. So I'll build this board up tomorrow. I'm actually just getting in tonight, but um, even though it's actually relatively early, it's only 10 p.m., uh, I'm pretty tired. We've been driving all day. We left pretty early and we drove through the rain all day, which is annoying and an insight. Um, yeah, so basically, yeah, we drove through the rain and I put uh, a beta version of the firmware on there on the drive back. It did not go very well. I didn't have time to put it back. So we got about a dozen check engine lights on the way back. Uh, but I, I was able to characterize what was going on there and it'll be easy enough to fix. At first I thought I had blown up the IGBT power stage. I was getting the P1440 error here. Uh, I'm opening this box right now. This is just DigiKey parts here. Uh, these are the prototype and production parts for the PCB that we just got here. Um, so, hey, look, they went back to the old label. So DigiKey last week sent me something in the mail that was like, uh, hey, we've changed our label. What do you think? It was atrocious. I'm, I'm grabbing it here right now. Um, I'm going to kind of just hold my finger over some of these labels. You'll still be able to see the order number, but uh, this is what... That's way too bright. Let me turn this brightness down here. This is what DigiKey thinks customers wanted was uh, ink that runs. Uh, they got rid of the borders. If, if you've never used DigiKey labels, then you'll think that I'm crazy. And, uh, you know, to be honest, I am. But this was the old label, which is now, I guess, the new label. Looks like they flipped back to it, which is for good. That was very terrible. You know, when I went to give feedback on that form, you know, it said, you know, rank the 10 things on here that are, you know, in the highest to lowest priority for you. And the two most, actually the three most important things weren't even listed, the part number, digital key part number, and then uh, product description. Uh, and they weren't even listed as options. And I'm just like, what, that's crazy. So anyway, yeah, I uh, got a whole bunch of these resistor values. Uh, I think I got like four different values, but then of course, after I ordered them, I realized, yeah, if I'm just using an external power supply, it really doesn't really matter what resistance value you get because you can just set the power to anything you want. Uh, photovoltaic, isolators, uh, 700 volt, overkill, 12 and a half amp, T0253, um, IGBT, I don't know, those are triax rather. Uh, a weird vertical one by two pen, I just didn't have room otherwise. And then uh, more resistors, so pretty, 
pretty small digi-key grab, but I always love their boxes. I always love their shipping material. If I've shipped you stuff, you've probably had digi-key packaging in it. So quick video, uh, you know, this is a, a very quick PCB. I mean, it took me a few days to figure out what I wanted to do. And then this was just a one day ordeal. Not even, not even one day, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna test it out here. I'm gonna, I have to program the pick and place machine cause I don't want to hand place a hundred and however many parts that is. And it's nine times 18, <laughs> whatever that is. Uh, it'd be nine times, it'd be 81, it'd be 162 parts. There we go. I can do math sometimes. But yeah, this will have uh, you know two wires coming off. I wasn't sure which side I wanted the wires to come off, and also thought maybe I'll maybe I'll want both, and so I just put them on both sides. If I do spin this ever, I'll I'll figure out which side I want and get rid of the connectors on the other side because they're not necessary. <clears throat> and then of course the million dollar question is, does putting one and a half watts of heat over nine resistors here on each module uniformly heat the module? Uh, the big concern if it doesn't work well if, if the thermal um, resistance is very high here is that the bottom of this model is going to get uh, or the bottom of the cell is going to get really hot but then the top over here is going to stay cold and so then you're going to have a heat gradient if that if that's what happens again I don't know but if you get a heat gradient across this battery that's not any better than it just being cold so we'll see what happens uh, I should be able to test that out pretty quickly again I just need to populate that and I'm not going to do that by hand so I will have to program the pick and place machine should be pretty quick though it's the same part 180 times or whatever that I just said uh, anyway as always thanks for watching